Hi everybody, welcome back to our ongoing series called Know Your Bible. Today we're taking a glance at the book of Galatians. Now I say glance because that's all this is. These videos are not in-depth studies or sermons. They're just refreshers, if you will, the basic summary, who, what, where, and when of each book of the Bible. And hopefully an encouragement to you to go back and read these books of the Bible for yourself, study them, and just let the Lord speak to you through each one of them. Now, the book of Galatians was written around A.D. 49 and believed to be one of the Apostle Paul's first writings. He wrote this letter to the church at Galatia, which he had helped found. But he was stunned at the news he was hearing of what was going on there. In 10 words or less, what this book in summary means is Christians are free from Jewish laws. That's what he's writing to tell them. Paul marveled that the Galatian church had <clears throat> turned from their freedom in Jesus and gone back to the rules of Old Testament Judaism. They put themselves back under those laws that they had been set free from. And even Peter, the apostle, the great, the great disciple Peter, even he fell under that as well. In chapter 2, you'll read this. He came to where Paul was ministering. And when the Jews came in, in order not to offend them, he kind of put himself back under dietary laws and not eating with the Gentiles, things that were considered unclean, even though he knew that in Christ, in the gospel, all that was done away with. <clears throat> so Paul called him out on it. In chapter 3, verse 1, Paul says, O foolish Galatians, who has bewitched you that you should not obey the truth? And I really find that word fascinating, bewitched, because it really gives us a clear picture of what was happening, how much they had been deceived and tricked into going back under these Old Testament laws. And he says in verse 11 that no one is justified by the law in the sight of God. The just shall live by faith. Now, chapter 5 is probably one of my favorite chapters in the entire book of the Bible, Galatians chapter 5. <coughs> Excuse me. In verse 1, he says, Stand fast, therefore, in the liberty, or the freedom, by which Christ has made us free, and do not be entangled again with a yoke of bondage. Now, you know, our ministry is called Free Indeed, and that is based on John chapter 8, verse 36, where uh, Jesus said, you know, if the Son sets you free, you shall be free indeed. And he's talking about when you put your faith and trust in Jesus Christ, you are set free from the bondage of sin. The bondage that sin has over us. We're no longer slaves to sin, but we've been set free by uh, receiving forgiveness of our sins through Jesus' death on the cross. So, <clears throat> all of that to say, in Christ we have this liberty. So, once we've been set free from the bondage of sin, but also legalism, I think churches today need to go back and study the book of Galatians. Some churches, they mean well, and they choose to err on the side of caution, and I get that, because we are to live holy lives. But if we aren't careful, we place ourselves and others under man-made rules, and we get ourselves all tangled up in the stuff that has nothing to do with the gospel. So we need to be very careful with that. And that, that I can get on that soapbox for days, but that's not the point of this video. But looking at this now, um, chapter 5, verse 13, Paul exhorts him. He says, Now for you, brethren, have been called to liberty, but only do not use that liberty as an opportunity for the flesh, but through love serve one another. And that's where we have to be careful. Yes, we have been set free. We are free indeed. We are no longer under the legalistic Old Testament laws and some of the man-made laws of today's church. However, that's not an excuse to go out and just live like the devil and do what you want to do. God forbid, Paul wrote in Romans chapter 6, God forbid, it's not an excuse to sin. But yet at the same time, don't put these restrictions on yourselves that Jesus never intended for us to be under. Love is the theme here, just as it was in uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 13. Love is the theme, and in verse 13 here, chapter 5 verse 13, don't use your freedom or your liberty as an opportunity for the flesh, but rather in love through love, serve one another. And that's what it means to be a Christian. And chapter 5, verses 22 and 23, this is so important. You've heard about the fruit of the Spirit. And that's the things we're to produce in our life. Produce, well, you know that in your grocery section as fruits and vegetables. So fruit 
is the product or the produce, what is produced from a tree or a plant or a vine. Likewise, in our spirits, in our lives, we produce things in our lives as well. So the fruit of the spirit, we're told in Galatians chapter 5, is love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. So if we are operating in the spirit, walking in the spirit instead of the flesh, these things are going to be produced in our lives. And Paul tells us there's no law against any of these things. So as long as we're walking in the spirit, producing this kind of fruit, we don't have to worry about breaking those laws anyway. So that's a lot of pressure taken off. So we just have to make the choice. Are we going to walk according to our flesh, our own selfish desires, or are we going to walk according to the Holy Spirit of God and walk in that love and patience and kindness toward other people. So to sum up this book, the Old Testament rules do not control the Christians' lives, but the Holy Spirit of God absolutely should. And he tells us in 5.16, I say then, walk in the Spirit, and you shall not fulfill the lust of the flesh. And that sums it up for the book of Galatians. Go back and read this book. Enjoy the freedom that you have in Christ. Let the Lord speak to you today. Thank you so much. We'll see you next time. Bye-bye.